Okay, let's have some fun by solving this nice little arithmetic problem without a calculator. And of course, anytime we're doing mathematics, we will always want to be very careful. So if you think you can go ahead and simplify this numeric expression, go ahead and put the final answer to this expression into the comment section. I'm actually going to show you the correct result here in just one second. But uh, I really don't want to give you too many hints because I want to give you a full opportunity to solve this problem all on your own. Of course, I want to walk through each important step. But uh, if you're at the middle school level or beyond in terms of mathematics, you certainly should be able to handle this problem. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades. It really is my true calling to help uh, as many people as I possibly can learn mathematics. And I'm going to tell you right now, all of you can be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that tend to struggle in math. Okay, please do not give up hope. Let me tell you the three things you need in order to be successful in math. The first thing you need is a strong work ethic. In other words, you have to be willing to put in the work. So if you're looking for shortcuts or easy way outs, they really don't exist in terms of math. So stop looking and just kind of buckle down and do the work. The second thing you need is encouragement. And really what I mean by that is you need someone to tell, uh, to tell telling you that when times get tough, that you just don't quit, okay? So in other words, don't drop a math class. Don't like, oh, this is too hard, or don't come to some final conclusion that you're just naturally bad at math. You can be much, much more successful than you possibly could imagine. But here's the third thing you need. You need great math instruction, okay? So whoever you're learning from, or whatever you're learning from, you gotta be able to understand the instruction, okay? Nothing's more frustrating than sitting in the classroom and just being totally confused for an hour, okay? Now, I'm not knocking any teachers out there, but if you're confused and you have no idea what's being taught to you, you're not going to learn math in that manner. You see, math is a technical subject, and it can be taught in a very technical way, where sometimes you might be in a situation where you know, you're just not focused. Here's the way I like to teach. Okay, I like to explain things in easy to understand language so all students can get what's going on without watering down what you need to know. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that you're preparing for that has math on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, maybe a teacher certification exam. Or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video, I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. Now, I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in the description as well. You absolutely need a strong pair of math notes to study from. Now, you should be taking your own notes, but most students take average notes at best. So you can use my notes, uh, you know, in the meantime, but you uh, really need to improve your notes. This is a real important uh, quality in terms of learning in mathematics is, uh, you know, detailed note taking. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely will help me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer here. We have a bracket parentheses, five minus one minus two minus three and parentheses minus parentheses five uh, times two parentheses bracket divided by parentheses one minus four parentheses. Boy, that's a lot of stuff. Now, again, don't use your calculator. Okay, now I know some of you are attempted, but put that thing away for a second. Just get yourself a piece of paper and pencil. And if you did this number crunching correct, you should end up with this right here, a positive 11 over three or 11 thirds. So how did you do? Well, if you got this right, let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face in A plus, a 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that you were able to simplify a nice numeric expression. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this problem. Now, if you recall, at the beginning of this video, I said that this would be appropriate uh, at someone that said, let's say at the middle school level and beyond, because in this particular problem, we are dealing with positive and negative numbers. So that's uh, generally uh, taught 
oh, let's say at the sixth grade level, okay, and, and beyond. So, I, you know, some elementary schools might introduce that a little bit of that into their curriculum, but uh, really you start learning about positive and negative number rules in middle school mathematics, okay? Now, there's some other things we need to know here, and that would be the order of operations and, of course, um, uh, not only just positive negative number rules as well, but we're going to end up with a fraction. But let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. So what do we do here first? Well, the order of operations is PEMDAS, right? Well, that's not what it is. This is a nice little acronym, okay, a mnemonic, which is a learning device that tells us what order to do particular operations. Now, what are mathematical operations? Well, that's adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, fractions, powers, all that kind of good stuff. So depending on what order we do um, uh, a mathematical expression like this, uh, we can end up with different answers. So the order of operations is basically a roadmap, a checklist that tells us what to do first. Now, the way this works is this P stands for grouping symbols or parentheses, okay? So this bracket here, right here, okay, is what uh, this, now you're, you're saying, well, those aren't parentheses. Well, the P, these are parentheses like this, but brackets are considered parentheses as well in terms of the order of operations. Uh, really what that stands for is grouping symbols. You're grouping numbers together, okay? And uh, when you're looking at the order of operations, what you want to do is work from the inside out, okay? So you're going to go to the innermost parentheses or grouping symbols, and you're going to work and focus on kind of cleaning that up before you do anything else. Now, the E stands for exponents or powers, okay? And you can see in this problem, we have no powers. I'm talking about things like 2 to the third power. Uh, and then the M and D stand for multiplication and division. You're going to do whatever you see first from left to right. And A and S is whatever you see first. That's addition and subtraction from left to right. But, uh, you know, this particular problem is not that difficult. But these are some of the um, kind of skills and knowledge you need to know in order to do this problem. Okay, so let's take a look at this set of grouping symbols, these brackets. What we have to do is look inside. We're like, okay, we're going to focus on what's inside. And here we have two separate parentheses. So we can kind of think of these as almost two separate individual problems. So we can go ahead and get the answer for this. Then we'll get the answer for this. And while we're at it, it won't do us any harm to get the answer to this uh, parenthesis right here. Okay, but you want to show things nice and neat. And you really don't want to take too many steps at once when you're doing a problem. But in this particular problem, I think it's pretty easy just to kind of focus on what's going on. So let's go ahead and get into it right now. Okay, so 5 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3. you got to be very careful here. This is really the same thing as 5 plus a negative 1 plus a negative 2 plus a negative 3. So this is really the same thing as 5 plus a negative 6. Now, you could write it that way, or you can have 5 minus 6. So 5 minus 6 is the same thing as 5 plus negative 6. We'll get to that uh, result of that in a second. But let's go ahead and take care of this uh, set of parentheses. So we have 5 times 2, which of course is 10. And then right here, 1 minus 4, we've got to be very careful here, is negative 3. So again, you've got to be very focused on positive and negative numbers. If you wrote a 3, a three here, okay, well, that's probably a very common mistake that a lot of you probably made. That's why math, when I said here in the title of this video, be careful, you have to be highly focused when you're doing mathematics. I kind of think of it as like driving a car, right? So when are you not focused when you're driving? Well, hopefully never, right? <laughs> hopefully you're always focused because as soon as you're not focused when you're driving a car, that's when bad things can happen. Same thing with math. You got to stay focused. Really, math is a kind of a, a game of focus. All right. So we know right here, we got a negative three for this uh, set of parentheses, five times two, we got a 10 here. And then all of this, we got it down to five plus negative six. We don't want to do too many steps at once. So let's go ahead and take the next steps. Let's go ahead and finish whatever we have to finish inside parentheses, right? So we're not quite done here yet. Five plus negative six is negative one. So now I can write this as negative one minus 10, okay, divided by negative three. All right, so again, you just want to write things one step at a time, and as you're doing 
this math, you kind of want to be grading yourself, like auditing yourself, like double checking. All right, did I do that right? You want to be a little bit paranoid and be like, okay, you know, uh, I always ask math students, like, if you do a math problem, okay, uh, what's the probability you'll make an error, okay, in any math problem? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, it's always pretty high because there's so many little things you have to write, and it's just such a game of focus. So if you if the probability is pretty high that you're going that it's very likely you could make some error, all right, uh, and even though you know what you're doing, you're just going to write something wrong. You need to be double checking your work as you go, and the only way you can do that is by being neat and showing each step. Okay. All right, so 5 plus negative 6 is negative 1. So negative 1 minus 10, all right? We got to figure this out. And effectively, this right here, because we're done with these parentheses, you can just kind of drop those. So now we have to figure out what negative 1 minus 10 is, which is going to be the same as negative 1 plus a negative 10. So negative 1 plus a negative 10 gives us a negative 11, and that's going to be divided by a negative 3. Okay, so now we have a negative being divided by a negative. So what's the rules for positive and negative numbers when it comes to division? Well, if you're dividing a negative by a negative, the answer is going to be positive. But let's go ahead and write this in a different way. So negative 11 being divided by negative 3. We can write it this way, negative 11 divided by negative 3. We want to write this as a fraction. We could see here negative over negative, or negative divided by negative is a positive. So our final answer is 11 thirds. And as long as your um, fraction is fully reduced and simplify, uh, no need to write this as a mixed number. In other words, you don't have to take 3 and um, divide, you know, into, uh, take 11 and divide it by 3. Don't do that, okay? I'm kind of telling you some hints here as a math teacher because, uh, oftentimes, okay, students for, you know, they, they feel like it's more correct to take an improper fraction and write it as a uh, mixed number fraction. So for example, they would take their 11 divided by three, they go, oh, okay, that's three times three, that's nine. Uh, that's gonna be uh, two, remainder two, that'd be two thirds, right? So uh, three and two thirds, the same thing as 11 thirds, three times three is nine, nine plus two is 11 to 11 thirds. Don't, don't do this. Don't volunteer to do this because what can happen, and I've seen this happen maybe 150,000 times, maybe not that many times, but I've seen it happen <laughs> plenty of times where the student will have the correct answer here and then they'll go ahead and volunteer to write that answer as a mixed number and then they make a mistake right here and then they turn in the wrong answer. And then that's when you get a lot of expressions like this or you can get like these kind of, you know, sad expressions. They're like, why didn't I just listen to that guy on YouTube? I would have gotten a 100% on this test. Okay, so anyways, uh, let's go and wrap up this video. Listen, if you are at the middle school level or beyond in terms of mathematics, you need to know arithmetic. You absolutely need to know fractions, positive, negative numbers, etc. So if you're kind of shaky with this stuff, that's what you first have to focus on. Okay, now if you're kind of refreshing some basic math skills, or if you're interested in kind of learning basic math or reviewing this uh, kind of stuff that you were taught in elementary school and middle school, let me suggest two courses in my math help program, one of which is my Math Foundations mini course. It's a great little um, kind of starter course for those of you kind of getting back into mathematics. It goes over fractions, percent, positive, negative numbers, uh, order of operations, uh, place value, decimals, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, if you're a little bit beyond that, then you might want to check out my pre-algebra course as well. Those are good two foundational courses before you move on to more exciting things in advanced mathematics. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.